Welcome back to the Global Business Report here on Arise News. Nigeria is ranked the 16th country on the global tomato production scale. Uh, the big news is entrepreneurs earn millions in the concept. Tomato products are cultivated in most states in Nigeria. Uh, these states include Kano, Taraba, Gumbi, Oji. Most of the country does not get about 45% of the tomatoes due to the poor food supply chain. Now, every year, Nigeria loses about 750,000 tons of tomatoes uh, due to the bad food supply chain. And to tell us more about the tomato industry, CEO Tomato Joss Farmin and Processor Limited, uh, Mira Mata joins me in the studio. Mira, it's good to have you with us. Good morning. All right. Um, let's start with uh, the agricultural sector in Nigeria, generally speaking. How would you rate reforms in that sector? You're a stakeholder as well. So what are your thoughts? And you've been around in the country long enough to you know, observe things. Well, I guess the challenges with agriculture in Nigeria are uniform no matter what crop you're talking about. Okay. The short story is yields are very low. And they're low both because farmers don't have access to high quality inputs and mm -hmm. can't pay for those inputs, but also because even if they had those inputs, farmers don't always know how to use them effectively. Mm -hmm. um, I'll give you a you know, very brief example. Right. So let's say you um, wanted to cook your meals for the week. Mm -hmm. So you cook everything on Sunday, you put your meals in little boxes, you freeze them, and you bring them out every day as you're going to eat them. Mm -hmm. Well, most farmers, what they do is they try and force you to eat that entire week's worth of food at one time. And your body can't absorb all those nutrients, right? Um, so when you think about that with fertilizer, for example, if you put all your fertilizer down at one time, the plant literally cannot absorb all of those nutrients. Mm -hmm. And so you're wasting a lot of the product, even if you end up applying what you should. Yeah. So there are a lot of practices and behaviors that need to change mm -hmm. in addition to the access to the inputs and the access to the higher quality seeds. Very good. Now, the issue of food sufficiency has come up lately, you know, and... Uh, you know, if you assess the uh, sub-region's efforts, especially Nigeria, as it were, so how would you rate it, uh, despite logistic uh, challenges, as it were? I think that food productivity and food security is improving in Nigeria, but I think that, you know, there are certainly still gaps, mm -hmm. and we see that in tomatoes, we see that in a number of other crops. Mm -hmm. um, there are very few crops in Nigeria that uh, are exported or that they produce mm -hmm. more than they consume. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, the efforts to increase productivity of farmers are very, very well received. All right. Um, but I think it's, you know, until Nigeria is able to produce hmm. as much as it consumes, okay. you have to be able to let some of the food come in from other places. Indeed. Um, uh, I guess to a large extent we've seen, you know, probably the... Uh, you know, backlash against uh, border closures, as it were, and all the import, uh, uh, you know, problems. So let, let's talk about the perishable crops like tomatoes, as it were. That is your uh, main field. So what are the main challenges like? So what, what is the uh, issues here in terms of uh, productivity? Sure. So, you know, farmers have a lot of challenges growing. Um, I mentioned, you know, the lack of inputs, the lack of fertilizer, sure. yeah. lack of access to high-quality seeds. Um, and, you know, they also need to change the way that they farm significantly. So, you know, increasing the amount of fertilizer, increasing the number of times they fertilize over the season, increasing the amount of water that mm -hmm. they put on the tomatoes. So tomatoes are actually a dry season crop. They oh. grow best in dry conditions, which mm -hmm. is why they grow better in the north. You know, a lot of people have said, well, why don't, you know, we grow tomatoes in the south? Mm -hmm. The bigger markets are in the south. Um, but without a greenhouse or some kind of technology, it's really hard to get the right climate for those tomatoes to thrive and yeah. to grow at high yields. So, you know, those are some of the challenges that farmers face today. Mm. And, and another lingering challenge is the issue of storage. And, um, you know, it has always been a problem with the agri uh, Nigeria's uh, agricultural sector. And you find so many of these tomatoes are produced and, you know, they're harvested, but then to store them and to bring them to other parts of the country and even... Uh, have them on a large scale for production uh, processes. So what do you make of it? Well, yeah, you know, the reason I got into this business was because when I first moved here in 2008, mm. I used to do a lot of work in the north, oh, um, right. working for a different organization. And I would see, you know, at certain times of year, tomatoes just lining the roads. Mm -hmm. You know, in Kano and Kaduna, you'd see farmers cut tomatoes in half, lay them out to dry because mm -hmm. the price was so low that they couldn't sell them. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like such a waste because I know that the tomato markets, you know, in the south, mm -hmm. in Lagos and Port Harcourt, they always want tomatoes. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and so, you know, the, the issue of transportation, of course, has to do with the roads. It has to do with the trucking industry. It has to do with a lot of the large-scale infrastructure problems of the country. Um, but beyond that, you know, I think that as more tomato processors come online, the market will naturally start to um, become more sophisticated. So growers in other parts of the world know who they're going to sell to. They are growing for the fresh market or they are growing for the processing market. And they grow different types of tomatoes that have different types of shelf lives and they grow different types of tomatoes that have different shapes and sizes depending what the consumer, what the end consumer wants. I think that will help a lot is you know, creating very distinct markets mm -hmm. that farmers will then decide, I'm going to grow for this one, I'm going to grow for that one, and I'm going to grow the appropriate fruit for who I'm trying to sell to. Very good. Now, tell us a, a little bit more about your uh, line of business uh, with uh, tomato uh, growing, you know, networking, uh, as it were. Sure. So, Tomato Joss is trying to be a tomato processing company, but right. for the past five years, we've only been doing farming. Okay. And that's a different approach than a lot of other processors have taken. What we've seen with a lot of the main brands of tomato paste is that people have launched a brand, okay. have been backfilling that brand with tomato paste that they're importing. Um, in a few other instances, we've seen people who have put up a processing facility mm -hmm. and have been trying to then source the tomatoes for that facility. Mm. Uh, we're taking a third approach, which is let's start with a very tight control over the raw material. All right. So for the last five years, we've been working to develop a very strong commercial farm that grows tomatoes at around 40 tons per hectare. Mm -hmm. And we've been working to build out a strong network of smallholder farmers who mm -hmm. grow for us. And they're now producing at an average of 25 tons per hectare, although right. the most productive farmers are at 35. Okay. And that's against an average of five tons per hectare in this country. Right. So we've really made some great gains with our farmers. Um, we felt that because tomatoes are so perishable and because they're so different from other crops, Indeed. they need to, you need to have tight control over your supply chain in order to be able to process. So finally now we're getting to the point where we will have a factory up and running mm -hmm. to offtake all those tomatoes. Very good. Now, you're talking about the tomato industry as it were, so what are the prospects of entrepreneurship based on, you know, your explanations uh, so far? Well, I think there's a lot of opportunity in a number of different areas. I think that there are opportunities for people with a little bit of capital to become commercial growers, but tomatoes are one of the hardest crops to grow. So it's not a beginner, uh, it's, not a, yeah. it's not an easy entry into farming. You should start with rice or corn or something else that is a little bit easier. I think there's also a lot of opportunities in in strengthening the infrastructure around farming. Okay. And so if I can give you a brief example, no um, you know, even let's say with a tractor, right? If I have a tractor that breaks down right now, I've got to call the John Deere dealer here in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. He's got to call his John Deere dealer in South Africa. That guy's got to try and find the part, yeah. ship it to him. He then ships it to me. And my tractor might be down from anywhere from four to six weeks. So some of the services that support farms mm -hmm. If there is a better way to integrate those services with commercial farms or even with smallholder farmers, I think yeah. there's a huge opportunity there. Okay. Talking about, uh, still talking about opportunities here, what about uh, the governments of the region, especially you're based in the north, uh, creating that enabling environment for such uh, that business uh, to thrive? So what do you make of that uh, scenario? Are they proactive? Well, I think part of the reason that we ended up in Kaduna State, mm. even though our name is Tomato Joss, has mm. to do with the fact that the government there has been really aggressive about bringing yeah. in private sector investors. Yeah. I think over the last four years, they've brought in probably close to a billion dollars mm. of direct investment, and it shows in the economy. Mm. You know, um, I think that I'm a capitalist. I believe in the private sector, <laughs> and I really do believe mm. that companies and uh, profit-driven mechanisms can yeah. help to grow the economy. And so, you know, creating an environment where um, there's less gatekeeping, yeah. where it's easy to understand where you need to go to pay for what kind of registration fees, you know, those kinds of simple things really make it easier to operate. Um, and so I definitely think any state government that's willing to simplify those processes will do well and will be able to attract that private sector investment. So, all, all right. So, the prospect of tomato uh, farming sector on a long term in Nigeria, what do you make of it? If those suggestions you've just uh, talked about are implemented, 
Well, I think that it is very possible to have a healthy and strong tomato sector in the country. Yeah. Um, we're blessed with a great climate. We're blessed with, in the north at least, a true dry season, which mm. is really very necessary for tomato growing. And there are great varieties that mm. do well in Nigeria. So I think long term it's possible. Um, the big question mark is, mm. you know, as we've been talking about probably for the last year, is climate change, yeah. right? Um, Tomatoes require a lot of water, okay. and Nigeria's use of water is going to become more and more important over the next five to ten years. Yeah. And earlier you talked about uh, the prospect of uh, importing, despite the fact that we have uh, you know, all these uh, raw materials uh, in the country. So I'm sure people will be wondering, how do we import, and then again we're still you know, producing what we should uh, be able to consume? So. Well, it's a great question. Mm. The thing about tomato paste is that it's a highly concentrated form of tomato. Right. So you need about five tons of tomatoes to get one ton of tomato paste. Okay. Nigeria produces around two million tons of tomatoes every year in the country, All but right. that's not enough to serve both the fresh market and the mm. processed market. Okay. So even if we cut post-harvest loss to zero, we would mm. still need to grow almost double or triple the amount of tomatoes in order to serve both markets. Wow. That is a... <laughs> a lot of prospects there. But, uh, you know, it's uh, interesting that uh, there's so many challenges and despite the fact that uh, there are also headways you can make in that uh, tomato industry, as it were. Mirror matter, uh, due to time, we'll have to end here. Our tomato jobs for me. Many thanks uh, for your thoughts on those issues. Always a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to be here. All right.